So now we'll take a look at esters, and there's a little more chemistry involved with esters than there were for acid chlorides or acid anhydrides. So we'll start with some synthesis and a, a lot of review here. So the first is going to be the, the bayer villiger oxidation, where we just add a peroxy acid. Uh, and in this case, uh, the oxygen inserts itself on the more substitute side, and that's why it ends up on uh, the right side, where we had a secondary carbon instead of a primary carbon, uh, to give you an ester. So that's one way. It won't be the most common uh, situation for that to show up in this chapter, but it's a way to make an ester. You can also make esters from the interconversion of all the other different carboxylic acids and derivatives. And we just talked about acid uh, chlorides and acid anhydrides and how we can turn them into esters. Uh, it turns out you can also do it with a carboxylic acid, but only acid catalyst. You have to have the appropriate alcohol with an acid catalyst. And we call this the Fischer esterification. And we're actually going to go through the mechanism on this one because it's one of the more important reactions in this section. Uh, and then finally, it turns out, and there's no real place for me to put this on the chart, but you can turn one ester into a different ester in what's called a transesterification reaction. This can be base catalyzed or a really strong nucleophile, or it can be acid catalyzed as well. Either way. Uh, but like I said, there's no real place for it on the chart. It's just ester making a circle back to a different form of ester. Uh, but like I said, we are going to spend a little time on that Fischer esterification. So if we take a look now at the mechanism for the Fischer esterification, we can see here that we're going to lose this OH here and we are going to replace it with the OR of the alcohol. And then this H right here in the OH will end up being the water molecule we form in the end. Uh, and this is one of those acid catalyzed mechanisms. It's the six steps that kind of sucks. Uh, lots of proton transfers involved and stuff like this. Uh, but let's hammer it out. It is an important one. Uh, if we look here, uh, again, it's going to be six steps, so we know that up front. Uh, when you put a strong acid with your alcohol, uh, it protonates the alcohol, forming something akin to H3O+. Looks similar to H3O+, and that's going to be the acid we need in the solution. And anytime we need a base, we'll just use the alcohol. And the first step is simply we're going to protonate our carboxylic acid. Cool, now that we've protonated our carboxylic acid, now an alcohol, which is a weak nucleophile, will be able to come in and attack. Kick the electrons up to the oxygen. So we now have an alcohol, and then what used to be an alcohol now attached. Still has its H. Cool, the most reactive part of this molecule is simply this oxygen with three bonds and a positive charge. That thing's a strong acid. And so being a strong acid, we're simply going to deprotonate it. And anytime we need a base for deprotonating, we'll just add the alcohol in. Cool, and we got this lovely intermediate, and there's nothing particularly reactive about this thing. We just got to keep in mind where we're headed, and right now we want one of these OHs to leave. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn it into a good leaving group by protonating it. And so I need another one of these protonated alcohol molecules to act as my acid. And now we'll have a good leaving group. And as we've learned, anytime you form a good leaving group, very next step, have it leave. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to have it leave. But rather than showing two resonance structures, it's pretty common to only show one and show these electrons coming down. But technically, there'd be resonance with this other oxygen of the OR group as well. Just one time, we often omit it. Cool, and you can see it's pretty easy to get to the final step here. We've just got to deprotonate, and so we'll bring another molecule of our alcohol back in. And that gets us to our ester. So, and forms another protonated alcohol, which I've done a horrible job of keeping track of. 
uh, but regenerating our catalyst right back at the beginning. Uh, but that's your mechanism for the Fisher esterification. Nothing more to it than that, but as said earlier, it is one, two, three, four, five, six steps. So against the same acid catalyzed mechanism with a little bit different players, different leaving group, different nucleophile, but that same six step acid catalyzed mechanism we talked about earlier. And finally, we've got one new way to make an ester, and I say it's a new way, but it's really an old way. Uh, but it doesn't involve the inner conversion of carboxylic acid derivatives in the traditional sense. We're not doing nucleophilic acyl substitution, but uh, we're going to start with the carboxylic acid. We're going to add NaOH and just simply deprotonate, forming the carboxylate here. And then that carboxylate's just going to do SN2. We'll attack uh, an appropriate alkyl halide, kick off the leaving group, and that'll get us to our ester. So we say we're doing SN2 with a carboxylate here. Uh, and I say it's a new way, but again, it's really an old way, SN2, just specifically using a carboxylate as your nucleophile.